All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some speed testing with two different SSDs with inside the Acasus TB501 Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. Now, those two SSDs are going to be the Western Digital SN850X, and that's the four terabyte version. And then the second one is going to be the Samsung 990 Pro, which is also the four terabyte variation. Now, the point of this video to give you a really good idea as to what type of SSD is going to be best for you to use to get the fastest speed possible when paired up with an enclosure like this for something like your Mac or any computer that is going to be compatible with this type of enclosure. Now to be clear I'm only going to concentrate on one thing here and that is going to be the right speeds for both of these SSDs. Now the reason why I'm only going to do the right speed test is because both of these SSDs are going to be roughly the same as far as read is concerned however there is a massive difference between them when it comes to the write speeds and unfortunately i've got to say right now the 990 Pro is not going to be the best option for this. Now, this is something that I have mentioned in previous videos. However, for this video, I'm actually going to prove the point. Anyway, so let me get into this testing and then I will come back at the end for a summary and just explain a few more things as well. Okay, so the first SSD that I will test will be the SN850X. And I have just done a fresh format on that to APFS. So if I just give you a quick look here at the info for the SSD, as you can see there, APFS. Okay, now the first test is going to be to move this 100 gigabyte folder to the SSD and then time it. So let me just show you what the folder is all about here. So as we can see, the folder has got 100,000 megabytes of data inside of it, which is 100 gigabytes. And it also consists of 161 items. Now, as I do this, just keep an eye on the activity monitor here. This is going to give us a rough gauge in real time as to what the variations are like within the actual bit rates or the write speeds as the data is being written to the disk or the SSD. Okay, so like I say, fair this one is the 100 gigabytes so drop start okay so like i say keep an eye on these numbers here or the graph and this will let us know exactly what's going on as far as the data is concerned or the speed of it now i'm gonna have to be careful here because this one's going to be quite quick okay so let me get ready to pause this hold on there we go okay and um, i'm going to call that 18 seconds so let me just make a note of that okay so what i'm going to do now is a larger folder transfer now i've got one here which says 500 gigabytes however what i'm going to do is to put the 100 gigabyte folder inside of it and then we should have 600 gigabytes. So as you can see here, 600,000 megabytes, which is 600 gigabytes. And now we've got 1,724 items inside this folder. Okay, so let me just reset the stopwatch and I will start this now. So give us a second, so drop and go. Okay, now once again, just keep an eye on these like, you know, numbers here in the graph. Now I'm not gonna wait until this is done all the way through because I will speed up through this but as I do the speeding up just keep an, an eye on the numbers and the graph and that'll give you a bit of a rough idea as to what's going on in real time as it's going through so let me just speed up and I'll come back in towards the end and we'll get a timing for it okay I'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause this should only take a few more seconds hopefully hold on there we go okay so i'm going to call that a one minute and 45 seconds let me just make a note of that okay so i've now just put the 990 pro inside of the acasus tb501 enclosure i've given it a fresh format and as we can see here it is APFS formatted. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing again here and I've just taken that 100 gigabyte folder back outside of that 500 gigabyte folder, which ends up being 600 gigabytes once the 100 gigabytes is inside of it. Anyways, just keep an eye on these numbers here and also the graph. So let me just do this, so drop, start. Okay, now this is also gonna go through really quickly and we're probably gonna notice that these numbers here are going to be slightly higher than what they were for the Western Digital and it might actually do it a bit faster. So let me get ready to hit pause here. 
okay pause right so 17 seconds i'm gonna call that actually <laughs> the western digital was 17 seconds what it is every time i look at these numbers here i'm always convinced that the samsung's actually running faster however they were both there about 17 seconds so roughly the same speed okay so what i'm going to do here then is to just pop the 100 gig folder back into the 500 and as we can see once again it is now 600,000 megabytes okay let me just reset that stopwatch and i will now do this timing so drop start okay so what we're going to notice here is that it is going to be really fast as it is well as we can see like you know well it's up to like six gigabytes per second there and this graph is also going to look like quite steady at the top and stuff however at some point we are definitely going to see this drop down because it will have exceeded its fast cache or its slc or pseudo slc cache anyway what i'm going to do is just speed up through this until i get to that point and then we can see how long it's going to take after that point to continue the data dump but also how low it drops down to Okay, I'm coming back in here now because, as we can see, it has now dropped down here and it has actually dropped down to about 1.6 gigabytes per second. In fact, it's going down a little bit lower than that as well. Okay, so as we can clearly see there, that has massively dropped down. So just to be clear, what's now happened is that we have exceeded the SLC cache on the SSD itself. So now it is writing direct to the slower section of the internal storage. Don't forget the cache is still storage like the rest of the SSD is, but the cache is just faster type of storage now I'm being careful not to call it SLC here because I believe both the Samsung and the Western Digital use what is referred to as a pseudo SLC which I'm not entirely sure what is meant by pseudo however and nonetheless as we can see here we're already up to two minutes so this has now taken already like you know a fair bit longer as it were I say fair bit longer it's now up to about what 20 odd seconds longer than what the Western Digital was and it's still got a fair ways to go here as well um, I don't know whether I should continue talking um, or should I speed it through what it is I can't gauge actually how long that last bit is going to take um, I tell you what let me just carry on talking uh, with a bit of waffle and I'll just pad this out like I say if I try to speed up and come back in I don't even know when it's going to finish okay but as we can see you know these numbers here are like really disappointing you know you've gone and spent all of that money on what is like touted to be a super fast SSD and then you know once you've kind of like exceeded that a relatively low fast cache um, yeah you know it's dropping down <laughs> ridiculously low and I'm finding it difficult to pad this out with more useless waffle although I'm gonna have to continue now because I definitely don't know when that's gonna finish but as you can see here this is like getting like you know really like a lot longer to do this dump right this should be finished shortly give us a second hold on <laughs> right oh Oh, come on this is painful right hold on nearly nearly oh come on you must be done now there we go okay so look at that three minutes and 34 seconds and the same folder only took one minute and 45 seconds with the western digital so as we can clearly see there the western digital beats it by a massive margin and the samsung just drops down to what most people are gonna see as a pretty useless speed compared to what they think it should be doing anyway let me get on to an end summary okay so to an end summary then and this is going to be very quick because what we have just seen there basically spoke for itself and you most certainly do not need me to over explain anything about those results now there were two things that I haven't done here they were the read speed 
testing and also the temperature testing now the reasons why i've not done those is well one reason is i wanted to keep this video as short as possible and i've already done those things in other videos which people are quite welcome to go and watch if there are if they are interested in such things but the bottom line to do with the read speed is basically they're identical almost as far as like real world speeds are concerned now when i say real world this is the important thing if you start looking at synthetics then maybe you know one of these ssds looks better than the other as far as synthetics are concerned but synthetics do not tell you the entire story and the only way that you get to know the entire story is when you do the real world disk speed testing which is what we've just seen in this video and that's what i would normally do for the read speeds as well however and the bottom line is they're much of a muchness do you know what i mean so there's not much between them which then means that the one that is going to be the best one is going to be down to its write speeds which is what we have just clearly seen there as being the western digital now as far as the temperatures are concerned once again i've already done that i've already done those in other videos as well which you are quite welcome to go and watch however with these particular tests that i did here neither one of these ssds was going to struggle anyway as far as temperatures were concerned and to be honest the western digital never struggles with its temperatures full stop it never reaches any kind of thermal throttle point but on that point the 990 pro does get super hot so that is another reason why i never recommend the 990 pro and especially if you're using an enclosure that isn't actually cooled and stuff the 990 pro is going to go into thermal throttling very quickly anyway yeah i could just carry on going on about these things which i've already done in other videos and stuff like that but the bottom line here is this you've just seen a set of results there which should be able to help you make an informed decision as to what it is that you might need or want from an external thunderbolt ssd drive and stuff or more importantly what type of ssd you would want to put in whatever enclosure you're going to use now of course i did use a very fast 80 gigabits per second enclosure here but the reason for doing that was because i just wanted to show as quickly as possible what these results were going to be when both of these ssds were able to operate much faster than what they normally would do with the likes of a thunderbolt 4 enclosure anyway like i say i could just carry on rabbiting on here and just repeat the same things that i've already done in other videos but hopefully what Whatever you've seen in this video is going to help you make an informed decision over what it is that you might want to buy now there will be light links and whatnot in the video description to the stuff that i've used in this video however i've got to be honest i would strongly not recommend people go anywhere near the samsung like 990 pro for these types of drives and stuff you will run into various problems to do with heat build up and thermal throttling and also in the long run it just isn't as fast as something like the western digital when it comes to the right speeds anyways that's me done i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now